Hey C8 Corvette enthusiasts, today I've got a set of the Paragon Performance C8 tubular headers and I'm going to do a little test which I believe proves that they're actually equal length. So before I get into that, I'm going to tell you that I'm no stranger to working with headers years and years and years ago. I used to play around with probably too many Pontiac Fieros and one of them I decided to swap over to the Z34 designated 3.4 liter double overhead cam engine, it was a V6, and it got stuffed into that Fiero and I decided I needed more power. And so I actually decided to take on the project of creating my own set of 36 inch long primary equal length tubular headers. And it ended up working. I ended up doing all sorts of math to measure down the center line of each tube and make sure that they were all the same and that they ended up in the same place. But once I was done, I wasn't completely satisfied. And I said to myself, how am I gonna be able to actually test to make sure that they truly are equal length? And being a musician, I decided, well, it's nothing but a big pan flute, right? So if I blow into each one, I should be able to get the resonant frequency from the tube and they should make basically the same pitch. It was remarkable. All six of the primaries ended up making the same pitch. I was really, really excited about it. Years and years later, I owned a V10 E63 M6, and it has beautiful looking tubular stainless steel headers from the factory. And same thing, I decided to put the forms to rest. There was a lot of guys on the forms that kept saying, oh, the headers are equal length. We need to buy headers from so-and-so. Uh, they're not big enough, they're not loud enough, blah, blah, blah. So we need equal length headers. And so I decided to just take a set of the stock headers, which I had pulled off, and I made a little video, which frankly, nobody really watched, but I proved my point. I blew into each one like it was a pan flute, and there's five primaries on each one. So basically you get the same note, same note, same note, same note. And then the last one, the tube was a little bit longer, so it was actually slightly lower. So in the case of the Paragons, let's take a look and see what they do, shall we? Here we go. <clears throat> All right, so just looking at these things, you can see it's, it takes a bit of work to actually bother to try to make each one of these equal length, and they're gonna go into different places in order to try to work around being equal length and pulling into the same place at the end. Taking a look at these, this one looks a little bit short, and short when you're a wind instrument means that you are going to be higher in pitch. So let's take a look, ready? Sure enough. This one's a little bit higher. Let's hear it again. So we've got bum, 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 bum. So bum, that's about our pitch. Hold that pitch. And let's look at this other set. Here we go. And the same direction would be this one, which is backwards. Ready? Here we go. So this one started a little low. This one did the same thing where it went high. Did you hear that? Here we go. So these two are slightly lower than before, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a serious win for Paragon performance. These headers to me are equal length or at least very, very close. Now, one of the reasons why I got so excited about buying these headers instead of say, Cooks or American Racing or some of the more popular versions is because on the actual Paragon website, they'll show a list of all sorts of headers from all sorts of manufacturers as well as their own. And for as many as they possibly can, they'll show the dyno charts as well. And we all know with the LT2 pushrod motor that the regular Corvette Stingray has, it needs all the help in the upper range that it can possibly get and frankly doesn't necessarily need more bottom end grunt. And one of the things I got tired of seeing was horsepower curves where you've got the, the main torque baseline and then torque, 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 and then it would just drop off at the end. And the same thing that would then, of course, happen to the horsepower. You got the stock horsepower line and a little bit of a sort of a horsepower blurb, and then it would sort of pinch off towards the end. That's the last thing that I wanted. One of the things that was impressive to me with these Paragon headers is the fact that the torque curve, completely flat for stock, if you just basically grabbed it and raised it up, it was almost a perfect line distance-wise straight across for the newly measured dyno torque curve for these headers. Now, of course, with horsepower, it's gonna start off with the stock horsepower number and start off with a small distance and become bigger and bigger towards the top because of the way that you multiply torque times RPM in order to get horsepower. And that turned out to be the exact case. You started with a decent gain down towards the bottom and a nice big gain of horsepower towards the top, which is where you want it. 
that's the thing that got me the most excited about purchasing these headers. Now I will say, especially compared to American Racing headers, at least at this time, this is December of 2022, and maybe some other headers that are available, these are not gonna be California Air Research Board legal, which means they're not CARB certified. It means that you can't actually smog with these legally in California, but I'm not worried about that right now. So let's also take a look inside of these things and see what kind of job they did at being able to, you know, gather up all four of these into one, whether they did a nice transition. This is not gonna be easy without some light. There we go. And basically from looking at this, they've welded four tubes together and then actually created a little diamond shaped pointed goylet that they welded on top of it and they filed it down pretty nicely. It's not bad. And the sides though, you can see, they're not like pinched in perfectly to each one of these corners and I don't really know if I expect that, but you know, flow doesn't look too bad. There's no restrictions on just one tube compared to any other, which is nice. And the fact that they bothered <laughs> in the first place to sort of, you know, at least make this stuff pretty clean and sort of knifey is, 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 is encouraging. So the inlets where the welds are for the headers themselves, um, they're pretty smooth. And that's just, I don't think they've really done much here. I don't even think they've polished this. It's nice welding. And I'm trying to decide if I want to spend any time at all with a sanding cartridge trying to smooth these out. And I think the answer will probably be no, because I'm more concerned about sanding through that than I am about trying to get some sort of smooth flow. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. If anything, they're nice and big so that whatever gasket matching you've got going on, there's, gonna be, there's not gonna be any lip that it has to go over to go in. And they're clean too, which is nice. They've, they've obviously tanked them, cleaned them up before they shipped them. Not greasy or anything. Or dusty. Another favor I've got to ask for you. I looked around on the web and I couldn't find anything, but if you can find anybody else blowing into their headers like a pan flute, be sure to leave at least the name of the video in the comments below. If you put a URL in there, I'll probably have to approve your comment before it'll show up, but I'd appreciate uh, some of the feedback along that lines if someone else has seen a video that's similar to that. Thanks. Take it easy.